Hi everybody. So today I'm gonna spend a few minutes showing you how to make an Aquarius cartridge for your Mattel Aquarius. Come along. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some proms. I say proms, not e-proms, because these aren't erasable. So I need to create some proms so that I can create the Aquarius cartridge. And it's relatively easy to do. I've, obviously, I wrote the software already. I already wrote Turmoil 2022 and, uh, oh shit, pipes. And then what you do is when I created that and I compiled it all, I ended up with a 16K ROM or a 16K image. This is a 32K chip. So what I need to do is I had to double it up. I take the first 0 to 16K has, a co has an image and then 16 to 32K has a copy of the image. That way, if there's any floating on the cartridge, Whereas it may, because we I've discovered that sometimes A15, which handles that higher block, floats. And if it floats, then you're all of a sudden you're looking at the wrong spot. So I have two copies. It's always getting the correct code. So I'm going to create that. And with the way I'm going to do it is, it's kind of bent pin. I'm using these right here are Cypress C2. Cypress C27, C256 proms. The difference between a prom and an EEPROM is that once this is burnt, there is no re-racing and starting it over. An EEPROM has a little window on it and you can take that EEPROM and put it in an ultraviolet system and clean it out. There are also EEPROMs, which are electrical erasable ones, but that's not these. These are just write once be done. So what I do is I always write a copy first and make sure it worked before I make more. I'm not gonna waste chips. And I'll show you how I did that in the other room. So what I do is I have right here XG Pro, which is software that works with the TL8662 Plus. I start that up. I select my chip I want up here, which is the CY27256 by clicking that and then going in and selecting it. Then I load the image that I want to create. And then I click on the program button and then I just put my EEPROM in, my PROM or EEPROM in. Click program and just watch it work. And as long as it's successful, things are good. If it's unsuccessful, then because these are proms, I gotta throw them away. If they're EEPROMs, there may be a reason why it was unsuccessful. Maybe the EEPROM still had data on it that didn't erase all the way. Maybe the pins are dirty. Maybe I need to put it in for a long erase. Let it erase for 30 minutes on the Yoshiwaya light because it's got a slightly bad memory spot that wouldn't burn. So what I do with EEPROMs, not PROMs, again, PROMs are one shot, do only. With EEPROMs is if I have an EEPROM that will not burn, I'll put a little dot on it, run it through 30 minutes in my EEPROM eraser, and then I'll try it again at another time. If it won't burn again, then it's trash. If it burns again, then I save the EEPROM. And the reason I do that is because a lot of the EEPROMs you buy now, they are new old stock. They've been sitting around for a long time, and some of them are actually recycled where they actually had code on it before. You can use recycled EEPROMs, burn them once, and then it's the last time it's going to get um, soldered into a cartridge and never get taken out again. It works just totally fine. You can use new old stock. They work just totally fine. Just sometimes you have to work your way around them. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going to make nine of these real fast. I already made one and I'm going to do 10 total. So those are two right there. And I'll just burn the other nine here. These are pretty easy to do. Make sure the notch goes in the right direction here. Put it in here. Program. They burn pretty quickly. They seem to burn faster, these PROMs do, than the EEPROMs. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just me because with the EEPROMs, because again, they're new old stock or they're used and recycled. There's always the, did it work, did it work, is it going to work fear. And with these right here, which are brand new, never been used, I don't have that fear when I'm burning them as much. I mean, yes, they can fail, but I don't sit there and worry, is this one going to fail or not? I just burn and get done. So that this is going to be four. I can do five more after that, and then we'll go into the other room, and I'm going to show you how I test them. All right, so now we're back in the workroom, and I've got the Aquarius set up. And this right here is an Aquarius cart made by Jay Snellen. It's a PCB he made, and I put a socket on it so that I can swap EEPROMs in there for testing. The interesting thing about this is this is an upside down PCB. It has to go in upside down. The reason it's upside down is Jay has... Now 
new old stock cartridge shells that were made from a mold that was done backwards. So you can't put this in right side up. You have to put it in upside down for it to work. So it's, it's a fascinating kind of way of reusing somebody's mistake. So now what we're going to do here is I'm just going to take these, and I'll only do a couple just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to take the EEPROM, or the PROM. What I'm doing is straightening out the pins here. I'll put it in so the notch here is lined up with the notch on there. Push it in. i to turn this off here. Insert the cartridge, and while I'm at it, let's mute the TV and turn this on. And we're testing just to make sure that the cartridge or the prom actually works. So I don't have to do this for everyone. I'm just going to do a couple of them like this just to get in. So yeah, that one worked. Then I just take these and pull this one out. Sometimes I'll have to use a little bit of screwdriver in here just to get it started because they like to stick in pretty good, which is good. Set that one to the side, try the next one. And I just want to show you, I'm just going to repeat this once or twice just so you can see. What I'm doing here, I don't know, it may be a little off camera, is I'm straightening the pins out so that they slide in straight. Then I push it down into the slot or into the socket, put it in upside down, turn it on just to make sure she boots. This way, I'm not going to solder a cartridge together and then screw it all together, put a label on it, and test it and have it not work. This way, I guarantee it works. So now I'll readjust. I'm going to go to the other side where I can start soldering. All right, so now I'm back here, or I'm now I'm here, and I'm going to build the cartridges, which is a very simple thing. The only we only have two parts to put on the cartridge or on the shell. Make sure they're facing the right way. Flip them over. You have to put them on this side. We have to put the EEPROM in place, and if you look at the EEPROM, you can put two different EEPROMs on here, and all these others are support chips for the bigger EEPROMs. We're just doing a small one. So to do this is real easy. We just Put that there. Sometimes they fall right in the hole. Sometimes you got to bend them a little. I like to take and just bend two of the pins over so it won't go anywhere. Take the little capacitor, stick it in where it belongs here. Again, bend the pin, the legs a little bit so they don't go anywhere. Flip it over. Take my solder. Take my soldering iron. I'm just going to solder them in place quickly. Okay, now they're soldered in place. Trim up the legs off this capacitor. And now what we need to do is we need to close certain jumpers on here so that this board is configured to work with this form of EEPROM. So what I gotta do is I gotta close on the back of the board. I gotta close jumpers W10, W11, and W12. Which, when I first started closing jumpers, I had a hard time doing it. And then just like just clicked. I just figured out how to do it easily. Put a little bit of solder on one side, a little bit of solder on the other side, go in between, put some solder in between. I don't know why it didn't dawn on me how to do it the first time like that, but the first time I was doing this, I was taking little pieces of wire and connecting them together, and I was having a hard time. And it just didn't dawn on me that you just solder them like that. See how the jumpers are closed off? Now on the other side, on the front side, we need to close pins two and three of W1, which is down here, so I gotta put pins two and three together. And pins two and three of W3, which is up here. And then it's done. This cartridge is now done. Now it's gonna go into a shell and then it gets tested. So let me just take that process there and then I'll do the rest of these all off screen. Okay, what I just did, I just grabbed a shell over there behind the camera and some screws. I'm gonna take this and this engraved portion is the front. 
this is the back. So I have to put it in so that the pins, the chips are facing up, so it's backwards. Put it in like so. Put the cover on it and drop the four little screws in there. And I don't have my screwdriver here, so I gotta reach around the back of the camera, grab that too. I got to put a thing up here to hold my tools. I've only been in this place now for three months. I'm getting better. I mean, got all tables everywhere to work on. I've got most of my stuff organized. But yet, the little things like things on the walls, I haven't put up yet. So there we go. And that cartridge is done. Now what I'll do is, after I do all of these, I will test this on the Aquarius again, and I'll move the camera just to show you that. All right, so now I've assembled all of them. And I just want to test to make sure that they work. I mean, it's a given they're going to, but I want to label them. I want to put them in a box and never have to worry about, did it work? So. Cartridge in. Reset. Yeah, she works good. The Aquarius has such a hard cartridge slot. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing it that way. It has such a hard cartridge slot to get into. It almost reminds me in a way of the Commodore 64 and the Vic 20's cartridge slot in the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the rest of these, make sure they all work. But as you can see, they do. And then the next thing I'll do is I will put a label on them. And then I'll box them up. I'll, I'll put the manuals together, I'll box them up, and they'll go on the store. So there you go. Start to finish creating brand new Aquarius cartridges. Have a good day.